So today let's take a look at this 2010 Honda Accord. It has the charging system error light on the dash. My wife's seen that and actually brought it right back home and good thing so I can take a look at it and sure enough with it running 11.6 I just have my terminal stuck on the battery there so it's moving a little bit. Make sure I'm getting a good connection here. I am have to go get my clips. I'm just trying to figure out if I got an alternator issue or something else going on because these do have the ELD sensor. It's basically just a current sensor here, this little brown rectangle here for electronic load detection. Basically a CT that feeds back. If there's something going on with this, then all this has to be taken out. You have to get to the bottom of it and the connector to replace that and put that across the main bus there. So usually I think if you're having voltage and current fluctuations, that might be an issue. We seem to really be not charging at all. I'm going to pull this cover off being careful with the fan running so I can get my meter lead and check it straight on the alternator. I've actually already checked my fuse and it checks good, but just to make sure it's not a broken connection somewhere else, pull the little boot up and get my probe on here. And yeah, 11.55 volts. So same thing at the alternator, put this back on the battery. And by the way, those anti-corrosion little felt or fiber washers do work well. If you hadn't never tried any, they really do help reduce corrosion because it's gonna happen. And yeah, we're still dropping off and being careful here to reach in by the fan. And you may want to actually disconnect the power plug for the fan and just have this one side unplugged while you're doing this. You could pull the relay, but you probably do want one side running if you're going to be having the vehicle running for a little while. But one thing to notice here, if I put a lot of pressure on the connector itself, you see my voltage go up like we're charging. So this does point to the alternator and to some degree a bad connection with the alternator. We'll be lucky if it's just corrosion, but it's kind of odd to me. But you see the voltage charged up some and that's slowly creeping back down. And if I push on it again here, there we go, it's raising up again. So definitely something going on with the back side of the alternator. I now have an amp clamp on here. It is upside down the way I have it clamped on there, but as you can see, we're drawing 21 amps and this fan is actually not running right now, but if it comes on, it's gonna go up to over 30. I'm gonna rotate this video so you can see the display better. So like 26 amps is drawing, and then when I push on the connector, I'm going negative. So I'm charging into the battery the way I have my amp clamp on there. So you can see I can get like 20 amps going into the battery, even though we have a, like a 30 amp load coming off the battery, I have more going in. And when I'm released, you can see I'm back to 21 amps draw and then the fan cycle on and thumbs up there. We at least know where to look. We don't believe it's the ELD. It looks like it's more of a connection with the alternator. If we get lucky, maybe we don't have to replace the alternator, but we'll see. I'm gonna have to cut that tape off and um, slide that rubber boot up some so I can unplug it. Just a little blue plug here. It's got a tab. Just want to push that tab and uh, rock it out like so. And the connector looks good. I don't see any evidence of corrosion. Can't really get in there to show you the connector on the alternator itself too well. Let me get a mirror. There we go. Those pins are actually in really good shape. So I don't think we have a corrosion issue, but let's look at the wires. They look good. Here's a close up of the wiring. You can see the little tab you have to push to release it. Just for the sake of the video, I'm going to run it without it plugged up and we're probably going to get the same thing. Just want to make sure it's clear of the fans and it is, but yeah, no change. So unplugged It's cycling from 20 to 30 amps or so as the fans cycle on and off. So before I get alternator, I'm going to use some contact cleaner off camera here. I'm going to spray the connector and the plug itself. Spray it really, really good. Just to make sure I don't have any corrosion. This actually did not help. I had the same result. So we'll skip forward to, I'm starting to remove the alternator, but I have taken a loose this bracket and taken off my ring terminal from my alternator. And you do want to make sure your battery is disconnected or in my case, I use an insulated adapter. So my ratchet couldn't ground out the positive. I was just careful to keep it insulated and I kept it tucked into the 
little rubber boot. I do have to disconnect the wire down here for the compressor. You can see that plug at the bottom. You can reach it, it's a little tough to get to. And of course I had to take the little tie wrap clip off the back of the alternator shroud. And here using a 14 millimeter socket, I've already removed one bolt here from the alternator right behind this bracket. And I'm loosening up the other one. As you can see, I've already used my belt tensioner tool to release the tension and take my serpentine belt off. So now if I just, if I just finish removing this bottom bolt here, the alternator should move out. And one thing about this vehicle here, I want to show you. So once you do get the alternator free, you can't completely get it out because of this fan shroud. And of course you got the head of the engine above it. So this shroud is pretty easy. So I just take these two out, loosen the bottom ones that'll slide out. You also have to take the connector, the electrical connector loose from the fan and just pull the fan and shroud assembly out. And once we remove the fan itself, you can just pull the um, alternator right out. So let's take a look at this alternator. I've already used the eight millimeter and taken off these three flange nuts. And I've also went around after taking these three off and I've taken these loose as well. And even on the regulator part, because I was having trouble taking the brush assembly off. But one thing that surprised me is I couldn't get my brush assembly off. I have taken it off now. So I wanted to share this on camera because I thought it was interesting. Um, I had taken a screwdriver and I tried to pry and it was just going to break the plastic. Usually these are not hard to pull off with a little spring pressure up and out. But I ended up having to get pliers and almost broke the housing to pull this brush assembly off. And once I got it off, I could see the problem. So it did break part of the brush because it was hung on there pretty good. I'll pause here and say, you can see how that kind of connects and how this connector for the voltage regulator kind of moves that. So I think maybe when I was pushing on that and rocking it hard is maybe why it was starting to output at times. And I'll show you why on this brush assembly. If you look at our slip ring on our rotor assembly, you may could see it already, but um, I was surprised at just how bad this one is eaten up. So it should be two rings just like the top one and the copper is completely gone. So I guess it was just getting a little bit of side contact when I was pushing on my connector. So maybe the eighth gen Hondas had this issue. I'm not sure, but I don't know if I've ever seen just one slip ring side wear that bad for you excite a coil. But as you can see here on a close up, that bottom should be looking very similar to this top and it's just completely eaten up. I'm actually going to hand it in for the core charge of the new one. I'm not going to spend any more time on this one because with that rotor assembly being in that bad of shape, it's beyond me taking care of this quickly. Now, if you did take yours apart and the brushes will wore down, it's kind of what I was hoping I had here. You can get these fairly reasonable. Um, I'm sure you can get them from the Honda place or from Denso, probably some good name brands, but you can get them online as well. I think everything's good with the regulator and the rectifier, but with the rotor being that way, it's just beyond me taking care of this today, especially being a daily driver vehicle. I want to get it up and running less than a hundred thousand miles on this one. So kind of surprising, but, but it is over 13 years old. So you got to give it that. I'm just going to put this back together and you need a little small nail or in this case, I had a cotter pin that's about the right size to push in and push your brushes down and just go through that little hole there in the front. Hopefully you can see that little spot right at six o'clock down there. And just push it down with your finger and slide it in like so. And now those brushes are down and we can put it back on. And again, this is how cheap the little brush holder kits are. I don't know how well these are made, but I just wanted to show one as an example. I haven't used it myself. I also want to take time to show alternator parts breakdown. This comes from engineeringlearn.com and I really like this picture because it shows you slip rings and how they are. You can see the stator, your rotor assembly, how everything goes together, including your voltage regulator and rectifiers. And if you want to learn more about the parts of the alternator, you can check that out. I thought that was pretty neat. And back now, crank it up and see. And there we go. Definitely needed the alternator. It's too bad it wasn't a simple fix, but that's how it goes sometimes. So I ended up using my $40 core charge on this alternator from AutoZone. It's just not far from the house, so they had it in stock and I chose to buy the one for $265. I'll show in a couple minutes. They had some other choices, but I chose this one and hopefully we'll get good service out of it. But I am happy about our charge voltage and our current. 
Yep, by 56 amps. Awesome. I do have the fan and shroud all back in place and plugged in. That's not terrible to take out really, but if you're on the side of the road or maybe a parking lot, that would be a pain because even though the fan isn't bad to take out, you do need to get to the bottom. And most of these, you have your engine splash shield. You better have some of these clips because you're probably going to break some. When they get 15 years old nearly, they want to kind of break on you and be hard to remove. But that is one aggravating part of the job, getting to those bottom bolts and the connector for the fan itself. But just to take a minute here to show what my local AutoZone had, they had the $329 gold and it actually was not in stock anyway. So I kind of like the middle ground anyway. Um, it happened to be in stock and really just as good of reviews or a little bit better really than, than the gold. So I kind of wanted to go that route. We also have one for around $195 that doesn't have but two reviews, but they are not good. And it actually was not available for me anyway. And just looking at that, I would not have tried it. We'll look at that in just a minute, what those reviews say. Um, they also have the Bosch that you can get. It wasn't available at my store, but $415. Not many people have bought that one either, but they get a good review. If we look at the reviews on this cheapo, yeah, gave out. Product gave out after two weeks of getting it. Yeah, yeah, I stay away from that one. Even though it's cheaper, it's not that much cheaper. And if you want to go really cheap, I mean, Amazon's got some if you're not in a hurry. I didn't really want to wait on mine, but I'd say the ratings are a little better on these. If you did want to roll that dice, this one here is even a little bit better reviews and a lot more ratings on it. And it's a renewed one that's got a pretty good, pretty good rating there of around four stars. So that might well be one to try if you was not in a hurry for it. I, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to have a link down in the video description of a lot of these tools and items I mentioned here in case it helps you as well. Any of those links you click on are affiliate links and they help support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching and God bless.